talking with, with Danny Kay. Um, you do so many things naturally. I don't want to get into the graceful thing again. <laughs> but you probably are a gifted natural athlete. And yet, uh, I don't know of you. Do, do you go out for any sports or did you as a kid, aside from golf? Yeah, I used uh, to play baseball when I was in school. Yeah. And uh, I was on the swimming team and I used to be a pole vaulter. Yeah. And uh, later on, I, uh, I played golf. And uh, that's about the extent of it. I've never been on a pair of skis in my life, and I've never ice skated in my life. Are you scared to get on a pair of skis? Yes. Yeah, I am, too. Uh, I, I have a feeling that I'd become addicted to it if I did it, and that I would undoubtedly bust my leg. Yeah, well, the reason I'm afraid to get on is because um, I have never been on a pair of skis in my life, and I think one should start skiing when you're about uh, five or six years old. Yeah. Very tricky. It's a marvelously exhilarating kind of sport. But uh, I think it's something you've got to start at childhood. I've water skied, but I haven't well, snow skied. I water skied too and almost drowned myself. The day I elected to learn to ski was the day that all the professionals were on the shore. What do you mean? Well, I, I was in the south of France somewhere and the, you know, the sea was kind of choppy. Yeah. And all the fellows who really know how to do it didn't do it. And that's the day I said, well, I think I'll learn how to water ski. And uh, I drowned. And who is sitting here now? M Morris Teppelman. <laughs> I wondered how quickly you come up with that name. But you do a lot of things so naturally. Now, you never had a singing lesson, I assume. Or maybe you did. No. It sounded like you did. Do you have any idea what your range is? Yes, it's almost three octaves. How do you test a person's range? I have never had my range tested, for example. I have no well, idea. Well, you call the like... gas company and you say... <laughs> Oh, really? And I, uh, Mr. Gas Company, I would like to have my range tested, and they come up with a thermometer. Oh, and and here, depending they? on how nice you are to them is where they... Test your yeah, range. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but frivolously, folks, how do you... Uh, well, you start you with a note on the bottom of the piano or in the middle or somewhere. Yeah. And just keep singing notes and see how far you can get before the dog starts screaming. How do you know I don't have a three-octave range? I, I would not suspect that you had a three-octave range, but it wouldn't surprise me if you did have a three-octave range. I bet I can Since get any note the timbre in of your voice seems to be encased in the range of a lyric baritone, I would doubt seriously that you would have a three octave range in the diaphragmatic control having yet to do with the expiration of the breath. I if you said if you are. Guy's a windbag, isn't he? Now let me hear that. Say that again. Now I if I said if you are. No, 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 you gotta go. Oh, I felt there. something go there. Mm -hmm. What note, please? G. 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 I don't know how, where G is. <laughs> G. Oh, G. Where is G? What note? almost had an accident and you're telling me that it's the same note that I sang before? A flat. Do it again. I'll take, you take me slowly. Do. do no, let's start low. Yeah. Do. Do. Nor do. Allein. Haben sie uns leid als Knöchel. He has not got a three octave range. Well, let's see how low you go. <clears throat> Start with here. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, uh. You got me at a wrong time. <laughs> if you want to tape the show in the morning, I can do very, very low. Can you? At night is very difficult for me. Can you? No, it's really three. three. Is that as far as you go? Ah. Uh, no, no. Actually, I can go from a uh, low D or E. What is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you're very good at that. See, you wouldn't be able to sing tenor rolls. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's not a tenor, Dick. What is it? That's Never a lyric mind. soprano. Oh. No, I, I, I was told once that I have a very low range. Yes, but you I, do. But, 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 uh, you have a baritone mm -hmm. range. And is there some gimmick whereby you can hit higher notes than you think you can? I mean, you 
And, and Lawrence Olivier, I've noticed, have this thing where you both can send your voice up into a high register and speak in it. And he, it, it's, when you do it, it sounds like when Olivier does it. You know, I don't know. Uh, you get your voice up into a very high thing that you can still speak in. I can't do Now, it. why do you do that and you have to use an accent when you do that? You know what you just said? I don't know. You get your voice into a high and you still can speak in it. Why do you do this? Because I use an <laughs> Actually, this is an accent now. That was my real voice I slipped into. <laughs> You know, I'm, an, Midwestern I'm an affected accent. Austrian, actually. Uh, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but do you know that thing where you seem to go up above your own little voice? And well, when... it's, it's... I, I, I don't know where it goes. That's it. Oh, I, I don't know where it has been. I see. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a thing you, you try. It's a thing you kind of... It, it's the <laughs> basic principle of having the guts to try anything. But to, but to do that thing without a trained voice, you could, by all odds, you would be straining or snapping something or hurting no, something. No, for the most part, when people do it naturally, it's because they know instinctively how far they can go with it. It is when people have trained voices, and goodness knows I, I, I believe in trained voices, but they, they get so wary of their voice to begin with, they won't take any kind of liberty with it about stretching it, you see. Because they're so concerned about mm. it. Yeah. But you never studied it, and yet you can do never it. Never studied singing, I never studied yeah. dancing, I never studied fencing, except for the picture. What made you, I know you come from a family of a lot of brothers, what pushed you into show business and the re rest of them into normal lives? I, <laughs> I, I had two brothers. Was, was there two, only, I guess yeah. I thought there were more. Is that? And I don't know, I, I don't know what pushed me into show business, Dick. I, I suppose I could make up all kinds of fanciful stories about it. How I eventually got into show business, but um, well, I would get into a whole philosophical, philosophical binge about that. You know, I believe I, I never even wanted to be an actor. What I wanted to do really is to be a doctor. And you've sort of compensated by sort of becoming half well, a doctor. Well, I, 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 I like medicine. I've always been interested in, but I like mm -hmm. a lot of things, and I've always been interested in a lot of things. And I believe that anybody given equal opportunity equal opportunity really becomes what they have to become rather than what they want to become. See, I wanted to be a doctor and um, I, I became what I think I had to become because it's the best means for self-expression that I have. Some mm -hmm. people do it by painting, some people do it in business, some people do it in composing music or writing. I do it by performing and it gives me great joy and satisfaction. I enjoy it. Probably just as well. I mean, you don't want a surgeon to be too much of an extrovert when he's uh, <laughs> They are he's in working. a strange way. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, excuse me a moment. Then, and then we'll... Maybe you'll do a piece of actual performing for us, standing up and all like that. I just said maybe. I didn't... Say, nobody knows cats like a professional cat breeder. Let's listen to award-winning cat uh, breeder, John Baker, with a message from Litter Green. <laughs> 